What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. Before we continue here, I wanted to talk a little bit about Bloodborne because some people have been asking me questions like what do I think about uh, the release on E3 and stuff like that. I've actually seen some secret gameplay trailers showing off like actual gameplay of Bloodborne and things like that. And I must say that it, it definitely has the, the whole uh, Dark Souls or Souls game like nailed down already it's got the, the the very familiar looking combat and things like that it looks crazy dark and gritty which i'm really really excited for and um yeah just overall it looks like what you would expect from from soft from a uh, from a game that they would make like that there are there are a few things in fact i would say the top three things that i really want which i uh, what are the chances, though, of actually happening in Bloodborne? Um, number three, I want to see a completely overhauled PvP system. A big part of why I can't get into PvP is because, well, I don't like it. <laughs> For one. Uh, two, my connection always sucks to trying to fight people in PvP and stuff like that. And it's just not, it's really just not balanced very well. Uh, to be fun for me personally. I know a lot of people love it out there. Um, it can be fun to watch like PvP videos and highlights sometimes, but um, I don't know. I really don't think, for, for me, I really don't think PvP is uh, the Souls game's strong point. I think it could be a lot better, and I would love to see them make a real attempt to come up with something similar but different that is just better. Uh, hitboxes, connections to other players, balances between weapons and different types of things from magic to melee and, and stuff. I realize that it's it's very difficult and it will never be perfect. It will never be perfect. It will always be something overpowered probably in, uh, in PvP and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I really think that they could do a much better job. Number two, I've talked about this so many times, storytelling. I know that maybe this is uh, this is what a lot of people enjoy. Again, like the, the whole, you know, lack of kind of storytelling that's in your face and, uh, you know, sort of like brought to you. You kind of have to dig for it. You're reading item descriptions, looking at architecture, blah, blah, blah. I know. I know what, how it's supposed to be according to the fans and stuff like that. But every time I have a decent conversation with an NPC, like, haven't I always said, like, wow, I love this. Why don't they do more of this? And and that's what I hope for in Bloodborne. I hope there are just more NPC conversations, more storytelling, things like that. I don't need... Uh, I don't need Watchdogs. I don't need Assassin's Creed cutscenes. I certainly don't need Metal Gear Solid, you know, cinematics all the time, stuff like that. Although I love that stuff. It doesn't need to be like that. There's a happy middle ground, I think, that can be achieved here with, uh, with FromSoft's attempt at storytelling and, and what some of those other companies like Ubisoft and, uh, and Kojima do with storytelling. And I would really like to see something, something more. Something more that makes my character feel like an active part, a hero, so to speak, that is really having an influence on the world and other characters like in the story react to that. That would be fantastic. And I really haven't talked about this much, but my number one thing that I would love to see in Bloodborne is more dynamic encounters. I think I've talked about this a little bit before about how once you've gone through the game and, you know, fought most of the monsters stuff like that you know exactly where they're going to be right because they don't move much from that place there are very very few uh cases where monsters are roaming around or on a patrol i think i mentioned this in dark souls one in particular during the dlc because i saw like some of the giants or, or whatever they were like wandering around in patrols i was like wow that's fantastic because then you don't really understand exactly where enemies are and things like that and and things become more unpredictable and that's the real thing that uh, that i would love to see more of in souls games or from soft games in general is more uh more just dynamic encounters especially especially with boss fights now i don't think many people have really thought about this but after having played Dark Souls 2 and having fought the Pursuer that first time, that was absolutely mind-blowing. It's so unexpected because we are conditioned to to expect bosses beyond a big white wall of mist or light or whatever, right? But what if they did that more like they did the pursu with the Pursuer, the, the first encounter? 
uh, at the Cardinal Tower where he just drops out of the air from an eagle or something like that? What if they did more of that? More dynamic boss encounters rather than uh, facing a wall. You know what's on the other side, so you know what to expect. And it, it, again, it becomes like rather predictable that you you understand what's about to happen. I would much rather ha see uh, dynamic and random boss encounters. Um, where, you know, you could be traveling around, you know, going through an area or something like that. And there's a chance that maybe like, bam, a boss just like bursts through the, the wall or something like that. And uh, engages you in combat or something like that. Or maybe in a different area he would do that instead of there in that section. You know what I mean? Like, drop out of the sky, burst through a wall, come out of the ground, leap out of an, a lake or something like that. That would be absolutely fantastic and, and would add so much more randomness and replayability i think to these uh games made by fromsoft i mean they are it seems like they're kind of doing that a little bit more with uh with dark souls 2 i've heard reports of yeah i mean you go to areas or you'll fight bosses again in new game plus or something like that and it'll be different like maybe they'll have some helpers like i've already heard for example the sinner uh, the lost, last lost sinner, right? Uh, gets like two pyromancers or something like that. That's really cool. That changes uh, things a, a little bit. But um, I want them to get away from this arena boss fight style of things that they do. It's cool, and it's 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 been a staple of their Souls games and stuff like that in the past. But um, yeah, just I want to see more randomization. More randomization in these games, so that way every time I go through an area or something like that, I don't know what to expect, you know, or a, at least a few times before I kind of begin to see more patterns or something like that. I think that that would be great. So again, top three things I want to see changed, maybe, if possible, uh, a, a huge overhaul of PvP. Number two, big time, like introduction of new ways of storytelling and, uh, and and more interactions with NPCs for more conversations and things like that make me feel like I'm a part of the story and number one yeah dynamic encounters be it random minions that are like on crazy patrols that are hard to understand or whatever or uh, and actually really I should say boss fights you know random boss fights that just kind of come out of nowhere to surprise you um, instead of you know always being at the end or middle or whatever of, uh, of an area that you're in and stuff like that so yeah there you go those are my uh, th that's what I have to say about Bloodborne I'm really looking forward to it I think that um, it looks fantastic there's a lot of other games I can see that are taking influence from Souls games um, Lords of the Fallen in particular definitely seems to have a, a, a Souls game vibe to it. Looks fantastic. I, I think that it, I'm really looking forward to that game. Uh, I hope that they do it well, and I hope that they do it in their own flavor as well. I don't need um, I don't need Honey Nut Cheerios when I'm already already eating Cheerios. Yeah, it's a different flavor, but it's more or less the same thing. Give me some Frosted Flakes. Give me some some fucking Honey Bunches of Oats or something like that. Like, give me, just give me something similar but different. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. Aha! I was right. Well, let's see what happens. Ho! Oh, I like that automatic doors. And there's another one somewhere. Oh, I can't remember where the hell it is, though. Maybe that just opens the door to an item or something. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that that door may just open to, like, some extra stuff or whatever, where this is probably the... I'm thinking this is, like, the main content. Aldia's Keep. Certainly seems like it. Wow, look at this place. Very, very cool stuff. See an item. Uh, this is actually pretty damn cool. For some reason, I'm getting like a Resident Evil vibe from this place. I don't know why. What the fuck? No. No, I don't like it when doors close behind me. Another petrified dragon bone. Are those dogs? What the hell are those? Things walking around. I'm really getting a, a Resident Evil vibe now. Those are dogs. I can hear the claws already. Typical. Typical nasty ass dogs. Come on. You are a dog, aren't you? 
Not very aggressive, though. No, you are now. You are a dog, right? This spear is amazing! What is that? Oh, petrification. They're trying to petrify me. Don't I have a ring that, um... Do I even need this anymore? Don't I have a ring that boosts my petrification... Resistance? Crap, I forgot. Ah, here. I know that nullifies petrification. Hang on. I'm almost positive. Ah, here we go. Increases petrification resistance right here. Ash knuckle ring. Sweet. Alright, let's do that. Hopefully that's worth using that... Uh, Oh, poison throwing knife. Nice. I would really love to get some more arrows. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what's her name? Matilda? Or, or <laughs> I I don't know what her damn name is. Uh, the, the old lady with the backpack on her back or whatever. Big, big thing. Praise the sun. Skeleton, yeah. Alluring skull. Times three. Looks like a box over here. What is this? Visions of chess, but tough enemy. Uh-oh. Really? Looks, uh... Looks okay to me. Wait a minute. What is this blood stain? It's... Fight? What the hell? Vi ah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see any teeth at all. Like, I was looking for, um... I was looking for, like, maybe, uh, those... Those teeth or whatever I might see in between the, um... You know, the lid and the face or whatever. I didn't see it at all. Dark mask and sunset staff. Ooh. Hey, that reminds me. There's a there's probably several weapons now that I've picked up that I haven't uh, actually read anything about. Like Mastodon Greatsword, for example. The brutish and mighty primal knights wield this sword like a featherweight twig. But the ordinary warrior is a choice. No, I think we did read this before. Right. Terrible experiments. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, okay. Whoops. Um, no, that's not what I did. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh... Huh? Key to the embed is a weapon? The once human embedded, realizing that he could never resist the temptations of the flesh, right, bound himself eternally with chains. Since then, he has awaited the day that someone, somebody, will find this key and bury it within his bosom. That's right, I've got to go all the way the fuck back there for that. Don't know if I can be bothered, to be honest. <laughs> like, I I'm finding myself voluntarily lazy. Like, to, to leave stuff out of this playthrough. So that way I have more stuff to do in in the uh, New Game Plus. What else happened? I think we got something with a... What the hell was it? Hang on. There was another weapon. Um, or at least I think it was a weapon. Um, hmm, maybe it's not here. Ah, well, here's the sunset stuff. The mysterious Lord Aldia secluded himself inside a manor to conduct various experiments. Wait a minute, didn't we just get a refreshment about various experiments? Those invited to the manor disappeared, replaced over time with malformed beasts that roamed the halls. Sounds like Nibelheim from uh, Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. Kaitha's chime. Kaitha, the goddess of tears, is known as a compassionate being that is with us in times of tragedy. But some believe that she is a demoness that guides us towards misfortune. Hex dedicated catalyst. Huh. 
Whoa, there's some weird stuff in here. I haven't checked my inventory in a while. No one knows the true identity of these men who are said to freely manipulate dark. Dark? Old foreign legends describe them as poor souls who chase the lost art of life drain. I could swear that there was another item uh, with an A in its name. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's just. Ooh, is that a? Yep, that's a bonfire. Let's just move forward, shall we? Maybe I'll uh, I'll remember it later or something. Bonfire, sweet. We don't need it, but it's very nice that we have it now. Very very nice. All right, so here is Aldia's Manor. So we're gonna find all kinds of crazy shit in here by the sounds of it. What is this? Item ahead. Item indeed. Thank you, sir. Fire seed. That's for pyromancy. I can't decide whether I wanted to use any any pyromancy in my uh, my next build. Like I really like pyromancy just because maybe I'm a pyromaniac or something. I don't know. But I think it would be fun to to have like a, a medium lightweight dual swords min build or something like that that uses pyromancy. Like just in random situations or something like that. Radium radiant life gem. Why do I always get only one? Radiant life gem. Why can't I get 20? <laughs> like before. Try left. Um, with the life gems. Thank you. Everybody's so helpful today. <laughs> Nothing right. There's a lot of messages here. Visions of dark spirit. Dark spirit? And then sadness. Ooh. Try play dead? What? Dude, there is a lot of... <laughs> a lot of bliss. Yep, here it comes. As... Uh, Aslatil of Mar... Mar... Wait, Mara. That sounds familiar. What's up? Wait, who's behind me? What is behind me? Huh? Oh, fuck. Alright. Fair enough. Wait, did I, I... I don't know what I just did. That was kind of weird. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Ass Latil. Wait, Lu... Lu... Luca Teal? Wait a minute! You're... F Shit, you just did what I wanted to do. Wait a minute! Is that her brother? Ooh, ooh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, damn! Yeah. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Good fight. I really didn't want to take a potion. Like, I just wanted it to be a straight up fight. Um, which kind of brings me to something interesting that I've... I kind of wanted to share with you guys, like, what are your thoughts on people that heal during PvP encounters? Like, do you see that as, like, a, like, like, do you see that as cheap, or what do you think about that? Because there's kind of a, there's like that divide in the community, it seems, of people that, uh, that, that really think it's lame or whatever if somebody heals themselves during a, a PvP fight. Uh, other people say, well, it's part of the game. Etc. Etc. I think that um, me personally, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it because, for one, look, we are in well, not anymore, but we we are kind of locked in these these areas, right, with our with our opponents. And I personally think that if the your opponent is slacking or if you are slacking or whatever, and they can manage to get away from you and heal themselves, then good for them, because. I think that the door swings both ways. For one, you should you should probably be on your enemy all the time and not give them the chance to heal. 
Uh, and two, the person that's trying to heal really has to time it very carefully and also leaves themselves wide open to attack by by their opponent or something like that. So I think if you can get away with it, good for you. Like if I was fighting in PvP or something like that and I see they, they get healed, then that's me fucking up is how I see it, you know? Somebody can try and run away, right, from a fight or something like that, but they're they're not getting that far, probably because of these these locked in situations or whatever for fights so that's just that's how i see it personally um although i can understand and i respect that you know that no potion policy or something like that <laughs> but you can't really expect everybody to follow that of course thanks for watching this video of dark souls 2 gameplay let me know what you think in the comment section below click the like button to support the series on my channel stay subscribed for more coming up soon my name is Kinetic, see you next time.